<laughs> my best friends are my. Hey, yo! What even is that? We're just banging them together. Cinderella, Cinderella, oh no, this movie, it's very smelly. Don't watch it. Yeah, they released a new Cinderella movie this year. And the only reason I know that is because this clip of James Corden humping some random guy's window. Let's get low. Oh, wow. And let's harass random drivers while they're trying to get to their destinations. It was a backward PR stunt, but it was also very successful, I think, because everybody knows about this video. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know that much about James Corden. I know he was in Cats, and that was a travesty. <laughs> That's what I say to you. <laughs> I also know he was in the Friends reunion. I liked the reunion of Friends, except whenever he was on screen. People as a whole just seem to not like James Corden for some reason, and I'm starting to get it. I think I understand why. The writer and director, Kay Cannon, is the same person that directed Blockers from 2018. This is the second movie she's ever directed. She's mostly just been a producer on things like Pitch Perfect and 30 Rock. But yeah, this movie stars Camila Cabello as Cinderella. It looks like she's mostly a singer and this is the first big movie she's ever been in. I think for her first big movie, she did okay. Billy Porter plays the fairy godmother. Sorry, the uh, fabulous godmother. <sighs> and I expected him to be kind of annoying, but no, he was, Pretty funny. And the prince is played by Nicholas Galitzin. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. I'm not sure. I guess the only real notable actor in this movie is Pierce Brosnan. Man, he kind of fell off after Goldeneye, didn't he? <laughs> what happened to you, James Bond? So yeah, I watched the movie with my wife and I made a breakdown of all of the cringe moments. And it's very long. This movie feels like a compilation of random TikToks of people just singing random popular songs. <laughs> They're stealing songs. To get you guys kind of prepared for what's in this movie, two minutes into this movie, the fairy god, the fabulous godmother <sighs> describes one of Cinderella's stepsisters as cray. She cray. Yeah, she cray. <laughs> I feel like this movie is perfect for very young people. They might even find some of the awful things funny. Maybe this is supposed to be like the Cinderella for a new generation or something. There's a bunch of really awkward scenes for no reason really. Oh. Is this supposed to be like, oh, the prince is turned off right now because she's drinking really weird. The majesty of the rhino at the watering hole. <laughs> The prince and his friends act very immature. The prince goes, oh, it's so hard to hunt a fox while you're drunk. And his friend gets very defensive over this. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. And then they start like throwing stuff like children. I think one of the things I hated most about this movie, aside from James Corden, hey, yo! is this random like rap group. It's like a stereotypical band but they have like this lead rapper in the band. Whenever he's about to start rapping to the townsfolk, he goes, hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Just play it. Just play it, dude. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> hey, hear ye. This movie tackles gender roles, sexism, and monarchy of the time in a comedic, yet at the same time, fairly abrasive and ham-fisted way. The prince doesn't want all the responsibility of the crown, so the Golden Eye King threatens to give all the power to the prince's sister, because there wouldn't be anything worse than a woman in power, right guys? <laughs> and then there's this choir in the background that emphasizes the moment. Your sister. Bum, bum, bum. Leave us, Gwen. Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. We shall hold a ball. A ball? No. Balls are fun. Yes. <laughs> Balls are fun. Most of you are probably familiar with the classic version of the Cinderella tale. The difference between this movie and the classic, Cinderella in this new movie has this can-do girl boss attitude and she puts her passions before love. There will be guests there from all over the world. Open-minded people with cash to spare. 
Whereas in the classic, Cinderella was just happy to be out of her circumstances with her stepmother and stepsisters, and she was kind of saved by the prince in a way. And I think I mostly like this change. Instead of using an entirely original OST, they use a bunch of already recognized pop songs. Queen, Somebody to Love, Madonna's Material Girl, Nico and Vin's Am I Wrong? They even use Seven Nation Army by the White Stripes. Somebody to love. <laughs> to be fair, some of the songs did fit the scene, but still kind of pulls you out of it when you're like, wait a minute, I know this song. There are a couple original songs in this, most of them being pretty bad. If I fancy new dress, paint your nails, you got a prince to impress, yeah. <gasps> So Cinderella's name in this movie is actually Ella. The stepsisters call her Cinderella because her skin is covered in cinders or something. Besmirched by cinders, they say. Because her skin was often besmirched by cinders. There's even a scene where one of the stepsisters is like, you have dirt on your face. You have dirt on your face. Are you racist? Are they making fun of her skin color? I think this movie focuses on way too many characters and tries to give them all their own arc. It's okay if not every single character learns something and becomes a different person by the end. You know, the prince isn't ready to settle down and his father is trying to force him to find a bride. You will go to the ball, you will find someone. Because he wants a grandson, goddammit. So then the prince starts singing that Queen song. It came out of nowhere and I was like, oh great, here we go. In the middle of this song, something really funny happens. A random guard starts singing the song and he has like a super low voice. Find me somebody, somebody to love. love. <laughs> <laughs> what? And then they start like trembling their gauntlets. Is that a dance? Are they dancing? I feel like one of two things is supposed to be happening when someone is singing in a musical. You're either supposed to believe the music is happening inside someone's head and the people around aren't privy to it, or the world around them is partaking in the music and it's actually happening in the world. While the prince is singing this queen song, he turns to his sister and she says, Dude, kind of like insinuating, come on, stop singing, it's really annoying. So this puts me in the mindset that this prince is scream singing to everyone around. <laughs> I know the, the rules in a musical are kind of different to like a normal movie. I just feel like if you have a character singing a song and then you have another character butt in and be like, dude, come on, stop, that's annoying. It makes me feel like, why is only this girl annoyed that this guy is singing and everybody else around is just like, yeah, this is cool, we like this. And the only thing that interrupts this song is Ella sitting on a statue of the prince's grandfather. Get off my dad! and she doesn't obey him. Instead, she like mocks him. It's just really hard to see in the back. Might I suggest you put some bleachers? Which would probably end up with her being hung. The prince, seeing this random girl disobey her father, is really turned on by this. And he's like, hell yeah, I like this girl. So he puts on a disguise and he walks into town and he tries to find her. And it's that very easy. easy because she starts screaming to everybody in the town center because she wants someone to buy the dress that she's made. Who would like to purchase this? completely non-stolen dress. The prince, he likes this. He likes this can-do attitude. Everybody else is like, damn, shut up. But he's like, I like that because you're hot. If she was just like a random girl just screaming about a dress that she's made, the prince would never want to be with her. But because she's obviously very attractive, you know what? I'll look past all that weird stuff. What's your price? And the best part is that Ella tells the prince that her only friends are mice. My best friends are mice. It's okay. I will just find you at the ball. She's a kind of a weird person that disobeys the king and screams at everybody and has friends that are mice. But she's hot though. So he buys her dress from her and convinces her to go to the ball because there will be business prospects for her there. So when Ella gets ready to go to the ball in the dress that she made, her stepmother denies her and tells her that she's already spoken for. When Ella fights back against this, her stepmother ruins her dress. There's this scene when the stepmother is talking to the stepsisters and the stepsisters are like, ooh, look at that hot guy over there. And the stepmother calls him toothsome. No matter how toothsome he may be. And the stepsister is like, what does toothsome mean? And the other one goes, it's the old way of saying poppin'. Ew, what does that mean? It's how old people say poppin'. Yeah, but do people say poppin' nowadays? I don't think they do. Poppin'. So yeah, the fairy godmother pops up now. Say my name. 
oh, sorry, I meant the, the fabulous godmother. They do this clever thing where Cinderella has this caterpillar and she takes care of it, so it turns into a butterfly. And then the butterfly turns into the fabulous godmother. The sound that he makes after the transformation is so funny. <laughs> The part with the fabulous godmother is kind of funny. When he finally notices what she's wearing, he kind of gets disgusted and he's like, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fab G is what he calls himself. Think Fab G, think. So then Fab G uses his magic on one of Ella's like drawings that she made for a dress concept and he makes it come to life on Ella. I think the whole dressmaker thing is kind of a neat spin on the Cinderella story because obviously the dress plays a big part in the story and twisting her character arc in such a way where like she just really wants to make dresses for a living and then having the fairy godmother not just give her some random beautiful dress but instead turn one of the dresses that she drew into a reality. I think that's a cool change. It puts more of the power into her hands rather than just magic. Before the magic is used to create the dress, Fab G goes, Like this was one of the parts of the movie that I actually kind of liked, but then James Corden and the gang come out of nowhere to ruin everything. Yay. He lays on the cringe immediately and he lays it on thick. <laughs> You can truly be not you but me. Skip the bop, the bop, and chop a chick up and hey, yo! That was rough. <laughs> it went on for a little bit too long, I think. Don't worry, Why does one of the mice have glasses? And it's like, oh, that's funny because they're being awkward and annoying, but he's actually being awkward and annoying. <laughs> 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 Every scene with the mice men is horrific. Where's my tail? I, I can't balance without my tail! There's even a scene when they talk about using their front tails to pee. I just relieved myself and you are not gonna believe how it happens. Through the front tail, we know. <laughs> and then James Corden and his friend learn what clapping is. And they're very enthused and they keep clapping. Uh... So Ella arrives at the ball. I have to admit there's one funny part in this scene where a cello player smashes their cello and then they pull out a second cello. <laughs> and and the crowd's like, ooh. And a random powerful woman asks Ella where she got her dress. And she stumbles over her words like she doesn't know what to say since it's magic. Where did you get that dress? Me, me did. I it's it's what I, what what I what I done what I, what I hope I I t -t -t today junior why doesn't she just say she designed it because she did that's her concept dress why is she all of a sudden so nervous this is the same girl that openly denied the king without any hesitation in front of the entire city so then she like stumbles into a drum set and creates all this noise so then everybody turns to stare at her. The prince obviously notices her, so they talk, they dance, they sing, and they're falling in love. She loses track of time, and then all of a sudden it's midnight and she has to leave. So she's rushing out of the door and she throws one of her glass slippers at someone. Look, she threw a glass shoe at me. It's glass, but it doesn't break. I know it's magic, okay? I get it. Magic. And then James Corden starts cleaning his fake whiskers. Make it stop! And then there's a scene of all the mice arguing and James Corden just keeps screaming, I was singing, I was singing. He just screams it. I was singing! Why don't you pay attention? Because I was singing! That's how he's funny, he just screams. So Ella jumps on her carriage and they all start riding back home. And on their ride back, the men start turning into mice. And there's a scene when James Corden's body turns into a mouse, but not his head. And his head is just sitting there floating while his mouse body is suspended in air and he's screaming don't look at me don't look at me because he's embarrassed that he has such a big head i guess i hate it i hate it I th it's, it's one of those scenes that's like so so bad that like it almost got a chuckle out of me with all the changes this movie made the glass slipper thing doesn't make a whole lot of sense she left behind the glass slipper and that's the only thing that the prince knows about this woman so he goes around and has everybody try on the glass slipper. And eventually he finds Cinderella who pulls out the second glass slipper and puts it on her foot. And he's like, wow, it's you. Oh, good for you. In this movie, they don't do that. 
the prince just kind of like goes from house to house looking for her. It makes the whole glass slipper thing less relevant in this movie. They kind of just put it in to put it in. The queen lashes out at the king and there's this kind of funny scene at the end when the king realizes he was wrong and he tries to make it up to the queen by like dressing up in armor and singing at her. And obviously his singing is terrible, but that's the point. We made Yes, thank you. There's just something about Pierce Brosnan singing because it's so bad that it's funny. This is me. <laughs> There's also this scene at the end when they're all singing and these maids are like headbanging like they're in a band. Like I get this movie's trying to put on this modern twist to make it funnier. Doesn't really land for me though. Then the rapper band comes out of nowhere again. Thank you. I need more of that. That is too bad. <laughs> <laughs> This guy. And then this random woman wants the entire world to know that she birthed 10 sons. And she screams and screams. She thought I birthed 10 sons! <laughs> wow, that's a lot of kids you had there. Good job. At the end of the movie, Ella becomes a dressmaker and she's with the prince and the prince's sister becomes the the queen, I don't know, everybody gets what they want, you know? I have to say, guys, this movie is not as bad as I thought it would be, but it's definitely not good. Granted, it did make me laugh a couple times, sometimes intentionally, most of the time unintentionally. I think if you're within the age range of like eight to 12, You'll probably get a lot more out of this movie than I did. Let me know what you thought of this movie in the comment section. And if there's any other movies you'd like me to review, please put it in the comment section as well. Go check out AlienClothing.com if you haven't already. My personal clothing brand. We have a bunch of awesome stuff over there I think you will love. Thank you so much to all my patrons. You guys make videos like this possible. I love you. Bye. Bye.